reminded me. All right. So for the directional bias, I usually turn that into a line chart. If you go up there, just literally here, it, it used to be that one. It used to be the candlestick. You just change it to a line chart just to take away the noise, making it clearer for you to see which direction the market is moving. So as just like I said earlier before, we have a high right there, a low, a lower high, a lower low, and so on and so forth, coming down and down and down. So on the daily perspective, we know clearly that the market is moving in a downtrend. And because of that, if you want to take a long-term trade, as in a swing trade on GBPJPY, your directional bias is stating that look for a sales. Because if you sell, you're going to get more profit compared to buying. Look at the moves as price is selling compared to the moves as price is buying. So which gives you, it gives you the point of perspective that in this, God, let me just admit this people. Sorry, I need to change my settings eventually. Okay, so with this, just like I'm saying, we're going to have, we're going to focus mainly on just looking for sales rather than buys. Because if we find sell setups, then we are able to have more pips compared to buying. From here, I'm going to convert it back into candlesticks, because for smart money, we do purely with price action and what the candlesticks are doing. So on the daily time frame, all, all I'm going to do is literally mark out all the significant highs and significant lows as close as possible, as close as possible to my to where price is currently playing at. So all my significant highs, I'm going to mark them. Then I'll mark all my significant lows. I hope everybody can see what I've just done. So all I've done is where price is as close as possible to my price, where price is currently trading at. If you have any question, you can just put in the chat box and then I'll go, I'll go over again. All I've done is I've marked out all the relevant highs and lows because what price does is, it's always gonna move within range. Price is always gonna move within range. After I'm done with the significant markings of the highs and low, I'm going to look for my institutional candlesticks. Does anybody here knows what an institutional candlestick is? If you don't know, if you don't know what an institutional candlestick is, give me a two in the chat box. If you don't know what an institutional candlestick is. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm just going to show you what an institutional candlestick is. I'm just going to show you. I believe everybody has an understanding. What platform are you using? I'm using I'm um, trading view. Sorry. So um, literally, an institutional candlestick is the last bullish or bearish candlestick before the down move or the up move, if you're taking note. An institutional candlestick is the last bullish or bearish candlestick before a down move or an up move. It might not make sense because of the way I'm saying it, but I'm going to show you. I just want you to have time and then write it down before I go ahead. The last bullish or bearish candlestick before the down move or an up move. For example, if we look in this region right here, Can we identify a blue candlestick right there before the down move? If you can see what I've just done, give me a one in the chat box. Ooh. 
we have lots of people on here. Let's just get the concept. I want everybody to at least get the concept. If we cannot do lots of things, but then understand the concept, I would, I would be very happy. All right, great, 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 great. We've got few people. So literally, the last blue candlestick right here before the down move is what I am going to call an institutional candlestick. I'm going to label this candlestick as an institutional candlestick. In short, I'm just going to write an IC institutional candlestick. And if I'm able to identify this last blue candlestick or last red candlestick in this case, can we say this is, a, this is an example of institutional candlestick, this right here, this red candlestick right here. Can we say, from what I've just said, from what I've just explained an institutional candlestick to be, can I say that red candlestick is an institutional candlestick? Thank you, Nick. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Why is it not the red prior to it? It decreased also. It decreased also. Which red prior to it are you talking about? Sorry, I don't understand properly. Yes, yes, it is an institutional candlestick. And the reason why it is an institutional candlestick is literally because, is literally because it's the last red candlestick before the ad move. Okay, you're probably talking about this candlestick right here, the red candlestick before the blue. All right, this one. This one is an institutional candlestick, but I'm not going to consider this because it has already been played. Why not the one housed in it? The one housed in it. Chris, all right, I don't understand that. <laughs> but yeah. If I'm talking, if you're talking about this big red candlestick right here, then what I'll say is I'm not going to consider this as an institutional candlestick. The reason be is this blue candlesticks right here engulfed it totally. And this candlestick, this last blue candlestick, the fourth blue candlestick right here has already eaten into that big red candlestick, if that makes sense. This is the reason why I'm not going to consider that as an institutional candlestick. But then clearly, the last red or the last blue candlestick I am going to see, I am going to mark it. On the daily, the only institutional candlestick I'm seeing right now prior or very close to where my price is, is that one, the last red, and then that one, the last blue. I hope everybody is happy. Give me a one in the chat box if it makes sense. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want everybody else to understand this, please. Give me a one in the chat box. If you don't, feel free to ask a question in the chat box and I'll go over it again. You're the reason why I'm doing this training. I just don't want to rush it and people missing the concept. Hence why it's basic. Good. Good, 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 good. It's clear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So every single place that I've marked as an institutional candlestick, all I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch out the zone. I'm going to stretch out the zone. And if we go on lower time frame, we're going to start seeing something very significant, very, very significant about these candlesticks. When we go on the lower time frame, we're gonna see we're gonna start seeing something very, very significant about these candlesticks right here. And one more thing I want to, I want us to know. Does anybody in this group, in the group chat, know what an imbalance in price is? If you don't know, give me a three in the chat box. If you don't know what an imbalance in imbalance in price. All right, good, 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 good. I'm going to teach imbalance again before we move on. So imbalance is basically, imbalance is basically difference in price separated by one strong bullish or bearish candlestick. Difference in price separated by one strong bullish or bearish candlestick. It don't make sense to you, but I can tell you, that this is an imbalance in price. This right here 
is an imbalance in price. Can I say it's an imbalance in price? If it is clear to you, give me a one. If it is not clear, I'll go over it again and I'll explain it deeper. All right, Lenny says it's clear. Dan says it's clear. All right, all right, all right. People are getting me right now. So literally, the reason why this is an imbalance is because this red candlestick right here, let's just, let's just take this off. I want to make it as simple as possible for everybody to understand on this chart. So this candlestick right here, let's make the color red. And this candlestick right here, let's make the color yellow. So candlestick red and candlestick yellow is separated by a strong bearish candlestick. And this is the strong bearish candlestick we have right here. The reason why we can say it's separated by a strong bearish candlestick is because the wick of the red candlestick is not touching the upper wick. The lower wick of the red candlestick is not touching the upper wick of the yellow candlestick. Does that make sense? Give me a two in the chat box if it makes sense. Two in the chat box if it makes sense. No overlap. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the wigs, the wigs of red candlestick and yellow candlestick has to overlap in the market. Repeat, please. Okay. So this wick right here, this red candlestick, literally, we can see that it, it has got no, no wick right here. But this one has got slightly an upper wick, but the wick is not meeting. If you want to see by example, look look at price right here. Look at price right here. Have you seen the way this wick is overlapping with that wick? The wick of this dodgy candlestick is overlapping with this bullish candlestick right here. This is what we expect the market to be doing all the time. The lower wick of the four candlesticks should overlap with the other candlesticks. The wicks of the other candlesticks. If that makes sense to you, give me a four, please. Give me a four. In that case, we don't see this around here. Hence, we say an imbalance in the market. Perfect, perfect. So now all we need to do, we have all the bullets. We have all the bullets to go straight into seeing what price does. Now we know what an institutional candlestick is. We know what an imbalance is. One more thing, does anybody know what a liquidity is? Liquidity. If you know what liquidity is, give me a three in the chat box. Three in the chat box if you know what liquidity is. Three in the chat box. I have one, two, three, three. How many people? Um, four, five, six. All right. One person said no, so I am going to go through what liquidity is. Okay, you don't know what liquidity is, but you know what a, an M or a W is. Danny, do you know what an M or a W is? Do you know what a double top or a double bottom is? All right, no. Okay, so let me show you. If you look at the market right here, can I say this is an M right here? Can I say this is an M? Can I say this is an M? Give me a one in the chat box if I can say that is an M. Good, 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 good. So in smart money trading, in smart money trading, this pattern is not your friend. In retail trading, somebody will tell you, if you see price coming back here, it means it's a strong support. So you can walk, try to place a, a sell limit right here. And when price gets here, it will trigger your sell and then fall back again. In smart money, it is never like that. In smart money, we understand that lots of people 
lots of people trading this market, which, which is basically retail traders, retail traders are placing sales right here. When price got here, they placed the sell. When price came back again, there were people placing sales. Hence, all these people have their stop losses sitting up here. All those people doing the sales have their stop losses sitting up there. And let's assume all these stop losses are people trading millions of monies, thousands of monies, trillions of monies, having their stop loss up there, thinking that they want to sell price down. In smart money, banks do not want you to win. If you do not understand the concept of how they are trading, they do not want you to win. So all they would do is, this place, this place is now a target for them to come and eat all those monies sitting up here. So all this liquidity up here, the stop losses up there above the M is what we call liquidity. Give me a four in the chat box if that, that, that is clearly explained. Good, good, good. Good, good. So in your, in your, every time you open a chart and you see a double top and M or a double bottom, which is literally a reverse of this one, it is not your friend. If you're trading smart money, it is not your friend. It should rather be a target for you knowing that smart money is instead planning to come up there to take people's stop losses. So is that an accumulation schematic? All right, I wouldn't want to talk about accumulation schematic right now. I want to go very, very basic, Chris. But yeah, literally, they are accumulating monies right here. People are accumulating their monies up there. And it's always a target for the big banks to come and sweep, sweep up the monies. So it is up to you as a trader to understand that the double M um, the double top or the double bottom, it is not your friend. Instead, is a target. All right, so now we understand what an institutional candlestick is. We understand what an imbalance in price is, and we understand liquidity. Now, I am going to go to a smaller time frame. Then we will see what and how all these things come into play. Now, I'm going to go on the four-hour time frame. On the four hour time frame, we are gonna try. Oh, Nana is back. <laughs> On the four hour time frame, we're gonna try and identify institutional candlesticks. Can I say, can I say that this is an institutional candlestick? Give me a one in the chat box if that is. Brilliant. Brilliant, we are getting it. And the reason is, it is the last bullish candlestick before the down move. See, there are lots of bullish candlesticks right here. Price was going in an uptrend, but then immediately the price, price decided to reverse. It was the last bullish candlestick before the down move. Hence why it is our institutional candlestick. I told you we're gonna be seeing something very, very significant about this, Institutional candlesticks. Can I say this is an institutional candlestick? This right here is an institutional candlestick. Can I say? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It is an institutional candlestick. And look what look what smart money does. Because it is an institutional candlestick, price will come back into this candlestick before a move on the downside. Are we getting the concept? Are we getting the concept? So literally look, from this candlestick, look at the way price moved down and came all the way back into the candlestick before the down move. Fantastic. So this is literally what the banks does if they create a pressure, a buying pressure right here, which is their institutional candlestick, they leave the footprint. They leave the footprint right there for you, telling you that 
yes, a big bank was here to trade, so they will come back in there before they close. And the reason <laughs> is, let me explain the reason for you. Today is a basic lesson, so I want to explain the reason why they have to come back there. We are in a downtrend, assuming as a retail trader, you are you're trading, and a trade you tr you place a buy right here, but then price decided to go against you, and you realize that the trend has changed. You realize that the trend has changed. You are in a downtrend. You drew your trend line, and you realize that price is respecting the trend line. What would you do as a retail trader? You want to close at break even as close as possible to reduce your losses. Does that make sense? Give me a yes or no. As a retail, as a retail trade, give me a yes or no. You want to close at break even or close with a small loss as possible. The same way these banks are not so stupid. They are not so stupid. So they 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 did a buying pressure right here, knowing that price is going down and the reason why they did was because if i should open up this area if i should open up this area can i say price was only consolidating in this area in this area let's change the color can i say give me a one if i can say price was only consolidating in that area and price wasn't really doing anything. Give me a one. Consolidation really means sideways movement in the market. Sideway movement. Look, this candlestick is a bullish. Bullish. This one came all the way down to balance it out. So price wasn't really doing nothing. But then look, the what tells you the institution came in is because look at the high of this consolidation right here. Let's take this off now. Look at the high of this consolidation right here. Oh, sorry. If you're happy to jump back on after this time is over, fine. I'm happy to go ahead with the training. If not, oh, come on. If not, then we'll continue with, um, we will just end there if our time finishes. Look at the high of this, of this consolidation. Look at the way price went all above it took out every single person who has got their stop loss above this consolidation before price moved down. Can we see that? Can we see that? Give me a two if you can, if you, if you can make sense out of what I've just said. Give me a two. So I explained to you, M's and W's are not your friend. And this is a perfect example, what the banks did. The reason why they showed you they were here is because there was a consolidation, people buying when price goes up and selling when price comes down. Sorry, people were selling when price goes up and buying when price comes down. And immediately the banks decided to change the trend. They created an, they created an institutional candlestick, which had a very good wake up, just took out people's top loss and immediately price reversed in the right direction. That is all I'm trying to say. I believe we have um, 45 people on the call. I want us all to give me a two if that makes clear, if, if that makes clear sense. If not, I am happy to go over this again. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Brilliant. Brilliant. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. So in the market, if you see this institutional candlestick, that has taken liquidity before the down move. This is what this is what we call an institutional candlestick or an FU candlestick. If you've heard about this name before, FU candlestick. This is your FU candlestick. They tell the people on the upside doing the sell. They tell them FU. And the people on the downside trying to sell with their whatever, with their buy stops and whatever they, they've got over here, they tell them F you and price move in the right direction. That is literally all what the market is doing. So now we understand that if you identify an institutional candlestick in the market, it is not 
it is a it is an area for you to focus your attention on and see what price does when price comes back there right okay let's look let's look deeper and see whether on the four hour time frame that's the f you means francis sorry it is not francis i can't say it i can't say what it is but if anybody knows what it is i believe it's something like this i believe it's something like um in the chat box i believe that is what it means i can't really say i'm sorry <laughs> oh yeah thank you chris thank you thank you if anybody understands that is literally what the institutions are telling you if they do that to you thank you dennis everybody is saying it thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so literally this is what the market it is doing thank you all right nana now you understand what it is right i believe you knew already but yeah let's try and spot what price is currently doing the area that price is heading towards, let's try and see what on the four hour price is giving us. So I am gonna come in this area, in this area right here. Do you remember we marked this area on the daily time frame as an institutional candlestick? Let's go back on the daily. Do you remember that we marked this red candlestick as an institutional candlestick? Give me a one in the chat box if you remember. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. So we are following it. We're following this. Good. It means that as price is approaching this area, what are we expecting for price to do? We are expecting price to reverse. Did you get the concept? Come on, come on, give me a yes if you understood it. If you don't, just say it and I'll go over it again. We are expecting GBP, JPY to reverse off the four hour institutional candlestick we have right now. Perfect, perfect. So we got few people understanding the concept that we are doing. Even though we were in an uptrend right here, I missed that, please show again, okay. I am going to show again. You, you are the reason why I'm here. So this candlestick right here, say again. All right, I'm saying it again. I'm saying it again, Sylvia. Okay, so the institutional candlestick right here, even though we were in an uptrend, but then the banks decided to sell right here. So the banks are in drawdown when price come back here. As common sense, all they want to do is close at break even and take out their money of the market. Assuming you have five trillion pounds sitting in this red candlestick as a seller, and you take that money of the market, what is gonna happen? The buyers are gonna have more energy than the sellers. Is that true or false? Anybody here with me? Is that true or false? If I'm a seller and then I take out five trillion pounds out of the market, Am I giving the buyers more power? True, that's it. Immediately I take that money off the market, the buyers have the momentum to move up. Hence why we are saying when price come back into this candlestick, we are expecting the banks to take out their big money from here, giving the buyers more power to move price up. Give me a fire if that's clear. because all sales need to pair with the buys. Thank you very much, Chris. Give me a fire if that is clear. Give me a fire if that's clear. Brilliant, Dennis. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So this is literally all the market is doing every single day. And what you see on the four hour is doing the same thing on 15 minutes time frame. It's doing the same thing on 30 minutes time frame. It's doing the same even on one minute time frame. 
All right. So now I have just two minutes on this call. Let's just do a voting. If we are happy to jump back onto the call, give me a four in the chat box if you're happy to jump back onto the call. If not, then we are happy to close right here. <laughs> oh my God, I love this falls. I love this falls. I love this falls right here. Good, 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 good. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to ask everybody to go off this call right now. I'm going to close the call and I'm going to reopen it in the next three minutes, let's all jump back on onto this call in the next three minutes and we will continue right from here. Thank you all and see you in a bit. <laughs>